All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Not sure who's uh, around since we're starting a little bit early here. But uh, it's Saturday. Hello, Tarek Gaming. It's good to see you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, today is the start of a collection of new streams uh, where the Bazaar of the Four Winds has released. And we've got a ton of cool stuff that we can do there. Uh, today is going to be dedicated to that. Now, I'm starting... I mentioned this on Monday. I'm starting today's stream a little bit early and then ending it a little bit early as well. So it should be the same length as normal, but uh, i got stuff to do this evening. So I'm hoping to be done with some reasonable headway before 7 o'clock. So we're aiming to finish it so just after 6 instead of just after 7 today. So hopefully everybody knows. Tarek says, I literally just finished the stream from last week. Literally. It's weird to think, I mean, hashtag humble brag, but it's weird to think that when the audience hits a certain size, there's always someone in that in that position that it sounds like a crazy coincidence that you're saying that, but the likelihood is someone's listening to my dumb voice t through all 24 hours of the day. So it's going to like line up somehow. It's a weird, weird, weird thought. Um... Benji says, it's really nice you've been able to catch up on Path of Fire and Living World Season 4. Yeah, uh, I just finished um, uh, recording the big uh, Labyrinthine Cliffs video, which I've got coming up for you guys. So it's not edited yet, and it won't be until like quite a bit later, because I have to stream now, and then I'm doing stuff in the evening, and then maybe I can edit it before bed, but in all likelihood, I'll be too tired for it at that point. But um, uh, yeah, I... I once this is out, once this is done, this next video, I'm caught up. Like, nearly everything we said we wanted to do, I'll be caught up with, which will be quite thrilling. Uh, so we have a... Speaking of, of that, we're currently... Once this weekend is done, or even later on this weekend, we're, we're looking for our next big stream thing to do. Um, and the question was posed on the last stream, what, uh, what series do people want to see? Uh, so let me find it for you guys. So we created a straw poll uh, of, you know, what what should we do? But go back to PvP, Guild Wars 1, Zero Terra Fractals Edition, Merciless Challenge Runs. Now, one thing I did kind of forget to talk about is the mirror. There you go. Benji already posted it. Well done, dude. Yeah, so if you guys go to that straw poll that me and Benji just posted, you can, uh, you can totally decide what we'll be doing next. I, I don't think anyone's really looked at it or linked it since the last stream. So the, the vote count... Yeah, we're only at about 200 votes right now. So you guys can vote and see what you think and what you want to do. Mostly people want to go to Guild Wars 1 at the moment, which I am excited about. I'm just scared of it because... Quite often, people don't know what they actually want. <laughs> like, they'll say it, and then they'll just disappear. When, like, the first hour in, they'll be like, oh, wait, the nostalgia's gone, and now I don't want to watch this anymore. And we're kind of locked into a couple of months of doing stuff that no one watches, so it's a bit scary. But, uh, yeah, it looks like it might be Guild Wars 1, and I can do some cool stuff with that. Please just not PvP, says Rain. <laughs> um... Uh, someone, someone, someone had a comment with the the Guild Wars one thing, and they were like, uh, "Don't do Guild Wars one because what if the next expansion isn't Cantha, and then you've done this now, and it's like ruined kind of thing?" Which is one of the comments I've been making for years now about the law series. But the problem is that if ArenaNet do things again like they did with Path of Fire, it's irrelevant. Like. Let's not lose perspective here. They announced Path of Fire was a thing and that it was coming at the same speed as a regular Living World release. Do you remember that? They went Living World Episode 6, a smaller break than between 1 and 2 of Season 4, and or 2 and 3 of Season 4, and then an expansion, and then straight into Living World again. Do, let's not butter it up. They went quick. So it's not like I'll ever have the leeway to know, ever. You know, I'm not going to be in that position anymore. They, they're not going to go with the cool Heart of Thorns format again. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. We'll, we'll have to see. Anyway, in terms of all the other stuff, it's nice. It's nice to be caught up. And it means that this week, I mean, I don't mean to get people too excited or anything, but audiobook progress and uh, getting back to the LP and stuff. It's good. It's ducks are in the row. I, there's, there'll be this brief window here where I feel like it is. There was a Winds of Change guild chat yesterday with Matthew Medina. Really? A Winds of Change one? No. Seriously? Really? Shit. I should see that. 
How do I feel about an Asuran centric expansion? I don't really believe that they've they're doing race but centric expansions. I believe it was only a loose idea at High HOT, and I don't think in any way POF was a human centric one any more than it was many others. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, not Winds of Change, Festival of the Four Winds. Right, right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be doing Festival of the Four Winds today, so let's uh let's let's well, actually, well I'll just show you guys, I guess. We're going to be playing a bit of Dead Eye, which you've seen in the videos. Uh, which has been blowing people's minds, the Dead Eye. Uh, it is really fun. A self-sustaining, such high-pressure build is, is so, so, so fun. You can keep the 25 Might and Fury on yourself at 1500 range and just... Oh, it is pretty gorgeous. I've had 140k um, Death's Judgment. Like, um, re repeatedly so. It's like 5 seconds, 140k death judgment. 5 seconds later, 140k. It's only one of the bosses you can get it on, I think. Who seems to just take a bit more damage than the others. Like, oh my god, it's, it's amazing stuff. I think it was about 140k I was seeing. Um, really, really, really crazy. Or like, you do enough 3 round bursts in a row, and you you can get like a 200k, 250k floater. It's, it's mental. Um... I've had more comments about Deadeye gameplay than any others for a long time now. So because this stream, we're likely to zerg the hell out of things. I'm going to turn shadows off and I'm going to turn reflections off because OBS is just a frame killer. Like such a horrible, obnoxious frame killer. So it's still not very good. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to be playing this. So my plans are I w today, w what I want to do is finish my festival stuff. So I've already done all the Crown Pavilion stuff. I've already done all the Queen's Gauntlet stuff. So I'm actually done with this area of the game, except for when dailies have me come back. Four Winds Customs, I'm done with everything except buying from Drewbert and uh, doing dailies lots. So I've got that. But then the Festival of the Four Winds, I need to do Kukukachu. Uh, the Aspect Sky Crystals and the Master Crystals. That's what I really want to do. And then I guess opening baskets around Tyria, but that's really boring for the stream. So this stream, I want to do these. But there's there's a lot of different things I want to do on the streams. You guys haven't seen my most recent video just yet because it's not edited. But um, I want to do some streams where we boss blitz. But here's the thing. I want, obviously, a bot split that we get golds on. And you can do that with one commander, that's fine. But here, here's what people in 2018, as far as I can see, don't understand. It's that if you want good farm, if you want good gold per hour in the boss blitz, you need to do this phase quickly, the boss blitz preparations. In years past, some people would set up servers and they'd do really well with this. But my experience in game right now is nobody's doing it properly. So I want to host a stream where we do it properly. Basically, what the idea is, is you do a boss blitz... You do the race, and as soon as you get out of the race, you just come here. Everyone on the map, you don't have cheap bastards. Everyone just throws a gold in. That's it. You just throw a... I don't know whether you earn a gold each boss bit. It's maybe 50 silver is enough. But if everyone does it, this bar instantly fills. And then five minutes later, you've just won gold again. Yeah? And then five minutes later, you win the gold reward again. And five minutes later, you do it again. And five... This is a huge... Like, people have these weird, weird, weird ideas about, like... Oh, I only need to pay attention and try while the combat's active. It's the same with raids. I don't know whether you guys have much experience raiding, right? But most groups, they're okay at the fighting and the combat. But they'll spend like 20 minutes build swapping and shit between encounters. And they'll like go off to the bathroom. They'll be like, oh, I'll be right back. I'm nipping to dominoes. Like they'll spend like eight, they'll waste tons of time between encounters and, like, nobody has any regard for efficiency with that. Oh, God forbid that you don't, you know, uh, no updraft Gorsable or something. You know, that's a, that's a bad example nowadays. But, you know, God forbid you don't do something really specific to shave 20 seconds off of an encounter. But we'll happily spend five minutes around. And it's the same here. Like, the preparations, you just want that bar done. And you just go again. And you kill the bosses. And you, go, and you get the bar done. You go again. So I kind of want to do a stream where we do that. I think that would be really fun. I'm not saying that will necessarily be today. But we can do that on the stream because the people watching will, will know and it will, it will be fun. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh, is, is Raleski in chat? Raleski, I have a big plug for you coming up in today's video. Well, not today's video. Tomorrow's video. Uh, if you guys don't know, the way I open and close my Let's Play videos with ambient dialogue, he's a YouTuber that does, does pure compilations 
of ambient dialogue around the game. So, uh, but that what's really cool is they do it for contemporary releases. So they did it for the Zephyrite, for the Bazaar of the Four Winds, and it's an amazing video. It's got so much... It's the easiest way to access the good story and lore. If you guys have played Bazaar of the Four Winds, but and, you think you, and you've think you pressed F on all the NPCs, and you think you've got all of the lore out of it, you're wrong. You haven't got all the lore. You've got barely any of it. You should wait and listen to all the voice-acted dialogue, but we know how annoying that is to do when something will fire, you know, once every few minutes or something. So you can watch this guy's video, Roleski's video, and he's just got it all compiled there. It's such a good video. And uh, yeah, I, I mentioned that in my coverage of the bazaar because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have a 15 minute section of my video dedicated to that. But you've done a video on it; it's perfect. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, so this that's one thing I want to do, and the other thing I want to do as well is Aspect Arena, which is awesome, but has no achievements or incentive or any reason for anyone to go there. So I want to do a stream talking about that and getting tons of people on stream to play it and experience it and because it is cool it trust me it's cool and i know some of you might think oh pvp it's not real normal pvp though it's it's very 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 cool and i want to dedicate some stuff to that so uh people just don't, yeah like benji saying i forgot people don't even seem to know it exists have i talked about the ending of the latest episode absolutely loads Yeah, so there's no achievements, there's no like meta category, there's nothing. It it sucks. It really 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 sucks. So, uh we'll see. Uh but yeah, I'm going to intro the stream now because um I really want to get some coffee. Ah, we never got the one shot. I want to get some coffee and then uh what we'll do is we will go get some sky crystals and stuff and we'll chill out and uh yeah, hopefully it should be a good time. So, I'll see you guys soon. I'm in combat. All right, we're out. See you guys in a second. Let's do it.
everybody there. Hello, 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 hello. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, everybody. Hope you're all doing good. Uh, good to see WP2 is almost finally caught up. Yeah, dog. Yeah, it is. It's like just a couple of odds away. It's all coming together at the moment. It really is. Um, guessing this is a good time to go watch the Ellen Keel and Evan vid. Is that a compilation of all the dialogue between those two? Is that a thing? Does no one know what happened to the gambit chances that we used to get during the Crown Pavilion? What do you mean what happened? Well, the feature of gambling to earn more stuff is not there this year. Uh, which I talk about again a little bit in today's video. But uh, I think the idea in general is they want like the repeatable farm to be downstairs, not upstairs. Because one is population reliant, the other is not, I think. But yeah, thanks Chow for the, the resub there. Uh, 14 months, dude. That's crazy. Thank you. BR Spies as well. It's good to see you 20 minutes ago. Um, hey WP and chat, how's it going? It's going good, next, it's going good. So yeah, uh, as I was saying just a moment ago, what we're gonna do on this stream is, um, uh, we're gonna go to uh, the Labyrinthine Cliffs and the Bazaar, and what we're gonna do is figure out where the last crystals are that I haven't got yet, because I kinda want all of this. I've been so into this festival, I honestly can't tell you. I haven't dived deeply in to getting all the achieves of any living world release since Siren's Landing. Like, and I can prove that to you. Look at my story journal, okay? So, I was done 100%, 100 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, We're still going. So, this is season three. I was full on with Out of the Shadows, Rising Flames, Crack in the Ice, Head, in the, head of the Snake, Flashpoint. Um... Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, and then one path ends. So there you go. It's interesting the UI is slightly different up there. 36 of 36. All achievements all the way through the season. POF came out. I, I finished Act 1. Not quite finished Act 2. And I'm missing... What am I missing? Complete 19 Path of Fire Act 3 achievements. There must be some hidden ones I don't have then, eh? For Janu's stained pectoral. Interesting. But look, 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 you can see I'm wavering a bit. All right, on Act 2 and 3. You can see when Path of Fire came out. Daybreak. Sweet FA. I've got loads to do still on Daybreak. Bug in the system. Sweet FA. I've got loads left to do. Long live the lich. Sweet. Sweet FA. Barely anything here. Got loads left to do. I, I haven't this season gone BD on the... Um, on the metas. And yet this festival has just reignited it in me somehow. It just really has. It's reignited it. And uh, so yeah, basically I want these three now. I want Kukachu. I want uh, the Aspect Gatherer and the Master Aspect Gatherer. So that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, and uh, on this stream. Hopefully it'll be interesting. I'm going to squad up as well. I guess my region right now is EU. And I'm pretty sure the last stream we did was NA, so that should work fine. You guys can play with me if you like. I really don't mind. Uh, it's uh, perfectly up to you. Let me remove that notepad thing there, which isn't needed whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can uh, join on by just typing in chat that, which is written in blue there. Donation notifications are off. Are they? They shouldn't be. I can say, oh, so Doug, you just donated. Did that not appear on stream? Did it really not? Damn, dude, I'm really sorry. Uh, I, I don't know how to put that on screen for everyone there then. Uh, but you did just donate with a tenner, really? Thank you, Doug. That's very sweet of you. Uh, you say, I missed your mixed bag stream a fortnight ago. And I missed your ship of Theseus stream. Uh, unhappy yet winky face. I'd bribe you to make more, but if we're doing factions, then here's a bribe for you to add me to your party instead. What, during factions? Dude, I, factions is going to be next weekend. Uh, you might not be there, first of all, and I don't know whether I should reserve spots to people like that. We will do it with stream viewers, um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, and we'll let, we'll let people vote on the build I'm running and stuff. It could be fun. If that's what ends up winning, then that's what ends up winning. Uh, but yeah, uh, you'll have plenty of opportunities to play. Hey Jerry, it's good to see you. That's really weird because I think this festival is the least festival-like and therefore I haven't been motivated to play it. Why? What's what's not festival-like about it? The fact that this little area here wasn't particularly decorated? It's a great festival in my opinion. I'm really, really, really liking it. 
It's all so high quality. It's so high quality. Listen, the, the guys that did this are so on point of like how development should be in that they've they've seen the efforts and the resources and the uh, new capabilities that the other devs have built into their releases and they've utilized them. The, the boat is there, the chairs are there, the new law book UI is there, everything's like there. It's all... There's like a level of cohesion that that team is demonstrating that like the corner team didn't demonstrate, you see? I, I really, 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 really think that they did honestly so good. This release is excellent. There's combat tonics here. There's everything that you'd come to expect and want and that dips into uh, Guild Wars 2 pushing the boundaries that's in this release. It's the best festival release we've we've had since Halloween 1. I mean, you could say that SAB isn't that. Uh, sorry, you could say that SAB is the best festival we've had. But the thing is, when SAB came out, it wasn't really a festival format or handled as such. So I don't know whether that's really fair. But in terms of a release, that when it was released, it's about being a festival and all of that stuff. Come on, like, we haven't seen an update like this. Lazy Daxon says, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. I hope you're doing good too. Matthew Medina mentioned they don't usually have a VA budget for festivals. Yeah, like there's all the VA and stuff in it. Uh, it's, it's exactly what the game needed after the corner disappointment. And it's not that I hate corner, obviously. It's just that it's obviously was lacking in a lot of ways. Uh, so having this, basically going corner straight into a good build balance patch i know i mean i know that uh, weavers are upset but come on it's 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 been smart the way they do it there was a nice little comment thread actually on one of my recent videos the person who was posting i can't remember that they might even be watching stream chat but basically someone said oh i hate seeing how much damage dead eye does when weaver just throws pillows now and someone quite rightly said in the comments well no hold on dead eye is pure single target um and uh, Weaver has a lot more utility than the rifle and the dead eye, and it has massive cleave. So, you know, if you put it into any kind of AoE scenario, Weaver still accelerates miles above anything else, and the balance is still fitting that the squishiest thing can uh, have the highest ends. It's just, you know, how the content itself is built at the moment. Like, it's absolutely fine, the, the most recent balance patch. I 100% agree. Somebody as well, I, I there was the most hilarious comment. I think I actually removed it because the guy was just so bit brain dead. But he was, like, really aggressive and, like, swearing at me in the YouTube comments. Saying that I was a salty weaver. And I'm like, get, find, find me one video or stream. We, we've had almost a year. Find me one where I've been playing a weaver. And then be uh, uh, or a staff weaver in a raid. Or a fractal. Find me one. One. I'll tell you what, you can't because I've never done it. It's impossible for me to be a salty weaver about this balance when I don't and never have played a weaver in a DPS role in a raid. I play Ellie, I play Support Tempest, that's it. That's what I've played for a year. So it's just crazy, like, the, I, I don't even know why people still think of me as, an, as a hard and fast Ellie main, to be honest, but yeah. But uh, anyway, 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 the, my point was going corner which was a little disappointment, but very quickly into a, a balance patch, very quickly into this, which is fucking awesome. And then hopefully three weeks raid, uh, and then hopefully a couple of weeks Halloween, and then and then the next uh, full full episode release. Oh, come on, come on. The, the, I feel like such a fanboy, and it's annoying that I feel like I'm the only person that will actually go out and say, do you know what, this is really good. It's one of those things where our player base just acclimates to an expectation of content quality and quantity and then no one talks about it anymore but this just doesn't happen it's so good it's such a like heavy heavy thing we're getting right um anyway enough gushing people don't want to hear that purely you don't like the fact that they added mounts in the labyrinth hopefully they'll scrap that and make a mount race in LA or another map the labyrinth does feel a bit weird of mounts I have to admit This festival's overwhelming when you're sick. Yeah, it's overwhelming because there's so much going on. Right, again, my plan here... Is... To go... Festivals. Festival four wins. We're going to do Aspect Gatherer, Master Aspect Gatherer, and potentially Kukukachu afterwards. 
So this doesn't actually have hints as to where all the stuff is. So we're just going to have to wander around until we find things. And no, you guys are going to be tempted to be like, oh, use a guide. Use a guide. Here's a guide, WP. Here's a guide. I don't care. I don't want to use a guide. That's not playing the game. So, uh, yeah, I know we have a squad. It's not really a squad worthy gameplay, but there you go. We're going to find it. All right. We're going to explore this map and we're going to find it. And the game's been muted and I'm really sorry about that. Also, people are going to keep spamming comments combat skills for literally no reason. So I'm turning effect volume off. So that the game sounds good and not annoying. And hopefully fun. Um, so yeah, we saw a crystal quite high up a second ago, just up here, right? There it is, on that water wheel. Apparently they've done some new physics on the water wheel up here as well. I saw a Reddit thread about that. Let's have a look. Yeah, look at this. So the devs talked about this. They said basically it's uh, wind simulation that they're actually technically using for this but it works anyway uh that they have like wind that's at the same speed as the wheel is supposed to be moving uh, we're actually walking slightly ahead of it there as you can see but yeah look water wheel it's a buff on us how cool is that i mean i think that's also this has got some interesting applications as well can you imagine a jumping puzzle using tons of these back to back there's so many things can you imagine a jumping puzzle using lots of these and conveyor belts which we saw from episode two and like platforms that turn on and off and lift around and stuff they have the potential for some wild jp action wild and for what is worth world 3 sab action it's a shame we didn't see anything in corner with that either what was the last big high profile jp we had at all was it the one in siren's landing that had all that praise and affection and they just sort of left yeah the conveyor belt basically is what that exactly Right, so in turn, we're 96% done of this tier. So I'm at 29 out of 30, but there's 52 total. So we might be in for a bit of a long haul here. This is probably going to be a really chill stream. I tuned in on an ink stream during the week, and he was so, like, I, I quite admire how chill he was in it. It was just such a relaxed, like, calm, like vibed atmosphere it was so like like I, I could never do that because i'm too insecure when i'm like oh i have to entertain people i'm not saying that inks wasn't entertaining it was 100 percent entertaining in its own way it's just it was just nice and chill and relaxed it was just exploring and i envy it to an extent turn down in-game sounds it's overpowering the voice a little bit is it really all right there you go you just lost another 3 db how do you get to the festival? It's been a long time, laughing my ass off. I love the thought of a person who actually is that, finds it that funny. Go to Claw Island Portage and you get a choice. You can go on a boat or you can go on a hot air balloon. Depending on which you pick, we'll take to a different area of the, the bazaar. So another thing we could do on the streams as well, by the way, is these guys, the traders. We could buy a ton of these and gamble on these. Now I had a friend who got a queen bee in like the first day um but i don't know man i'm not sure what i can really afford i spent a ton of ecto on the first day on it and now ecto prices you. have started climbing again the only thing i might be considered is gold just because i have tons of it but this is gold ore not gold ingots yeah so my investments are in ingots and that means i don't really so I don't, i'm not sure really what i've got available for all of that so have to see. All right, let's keep looking around down here. RNG hates me. I haven't even got the gloves out of them. Oh, I've got some of the gloves. There's lots of different gloves, though, aren't there? I got some of them. I, I have, like... Isn't it wind, lightning, and flame, possibly, for all three classes for a total of nine different sets of glove skins? That's what my impression has been of it, but I'm not 100% sure just yet. Uh, oh, does it say on Guild Wars 2 efficiency what the cheapest is? Oh, I'm not going to, like, min-max and try and do that. I, fuck that. I don't have the, the, the straight-up gold capital anyway. I've given away too much gold lately. I'm back up to 200, but I bought gems in the week. Oh, yeah, I got keys to open on the stream. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, um, I bought gems, and I bought some keys, and I bought uh, one of the new things that was on the gem store, like the headpieces. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, what's an easy way for me to get chests? 
There's no TP here, despite the fact it's... Oh, no, there is a TP here. All right, let's, let's open these. Let's open these bad boys and see what we get. You will always enjoy that, right? Uh, God, the overlays are going quite a lot as well at the moment. 15, let's buy. Uh, flying chicken BLC V turtles. <laughs> Did you do that a while ago and I just forgot? Um, wow, what is this? Black Lion exclusives chest. Uh, oh, Xavier, it's good to see you, dude. Uh, was acting editor at the newspaper this week, so I'll send you a link next week if you want to read. Ah, so that uh, Guild Wars buddy is a per he even appears in a few of videos, and I've appeared on a few of his guys. But he's an old friend of mine that um, I was talking to a little bit last week or earlier in the week about basically just online so-called journalism in the games industry. No free and he was talking about it from a more uh, dare I use the word traditional perspective you know and and realistic real world perspective where things like having editors is important but yeah it's good to see you dude and Canada Canada turtle you got a year dude that's awesome all right let's open these I know you guys want to see it so here we go one so we get Primordus die which I don't think is valuable and Nash blade Zephyrite supply box Affected by magic find, it's available exclusively from the chest during the Festival of the Four Winds. And it contains... No refund. Oh, so it's basically just another version of... What we were already looking at, right? I see, I see, I see, okay. It's interesting to put ebb and flow on there, by the way, because they're not actually worth that much, I don't think. In the ultra rare rewards. Imagine rolling a, a flow. Unless it is worth a lot, and I'm just wrong. Well, these pollies, they're not worth much. Um, boot box, though, that'd be cool. Okay, so it's just another way of getting those for freezies, almost. Uh, we get the statuette and just a gold. You get a gold every time. Well, it looks like... Oh, no, you don't. Uh, so another box, another statuette, a scrap, so, uh, a hair kit. That one wasn't very good. Uh, Lion's Arch Survivor's die kit. I think I have all of those as well. Uh, black line materials, not too exciting. That looks valuable. Not too exciting. Revive orb and some stuff. Blair. Well, that was five really underwhelming keys. Let me be. Let me just say. But usually when I stream these, the keys go really well. So that's fair, I suppose. TP to a friend and an upgrade extractor. That one's not very good. Upgrade extractor and a heavy crafting bag. That one's not very good. <laughs> transmutation charges. Yay! I get more transmutation charges. I really needed these. Let me just be clear. The amount of times I swapped my fashion wars, I was quickly running out. Two... St oh, three health statues. This is going badly. What is the rare roll at the moment? Is it? Is it? Is this just terrible luck? Uh, the chests themselves aren't magic find affected. Ah, oh, there we go. A guaranteed weapon unlock. I'm actually happy with that. Blue shift die. A, to a toy mini egg. Never have too much treasure. Whenever I get toy mini eggs, it always I, I like I do toy mini egg giveaways sometimes. So it, to me, it's always like one of the things. Like, oh, give these away. Oh, what a waste, guys. What a waste. Are rare rolls still a thing? <laughs> Uh, yeah, all right. Well, there you go. Nobody buy keys. There you go. The anti-advertising. That's what the devs are reliant on. They want streamers to open them and get lucky so that everyone else will buy keys. But there I got unlucky, so it's okay. That The silver lining is, is a arena net of de de uh, denied cash. Oh, I got Abyss die. If this was several years ago, I'd be pretty excited about that. Now it's just worth the gold, but still, there you go. Okay, this was it. This was the main thing I wanted. Didn't get the storm dagger. Oh, is that what it's rolling for? The storm dagger. You break it, I break you. Well, look, we'll fuck. We'll mess with the inventory later, I guess. Um, let me just throw this stuff away. I don't anticipate it getting filled here because you don't really get traditional loot in the in the cliffs as much as anywhere else. So that's fine. Right, crystals. One place I want to go. Uh, it, uh, uh, you got to one thing. You guys have got to understand a little bit right now is I did just do uh, uh, the greater part of an hour-long video 
where I'm talking about purely all the stuff that goes on in this instance in this patch so a lot of things I'm, I'm tempted to say is kind of repeating myself for things you haven't heard me say yet so it's, I mean, a bit of a position, but let me just say aren't these water areas awesome this patch this is so much cooler than last time the festival was here there's so much more exploration available when the meta gets to the point where you're sailing around out here in the waters this is so like 10 out of 10 this is awesome I really, really, really like how much they've incorporated these areas. And like that you dive under and you get the bags every now and then. It's brilliant. Um, now, though there is one specific NPC I know everybody wants me to talk about, which is the Mordrum guy. Yeah, look, look, I, I look at chat and immediately people are like, oh, did you talk about the Mordrum guy? Trust me, I've seen the Mordrum guy. You go Well, actually, I haven't seen him in game, but I have seen his dialogue and basically wild. everyone has asked me about him. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we'll find that at some point today while we're looking for crystals. Check it out, the boat tech, as I talked about, combined with the chair tech. Four of us can sit down, look at that. Awesome, with the new animations. You can just sort of chill here. It's night. I really don't like the way that this place looks at night. That's my only criticism with it. I don't like the cliffs at night. But the rest of it's fine. Here you get the changing tent where you can go to the beach and your swimwear. And it's one of the rare occasions where... Listen. I paid very close attention. Three. Oh, oh. Okay, it's picking something up, but does it sound horrendous is the next question. Is it okay? Yeah, just type to people. I don't know how that happened. Apparently my mic unplugged somehow. Saved. There we go. All right, it's back. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell happened there. Jesus. What happened there? I don't... Maybe the cable has been getting looser and looser and looser over the years. So, uh, oh, it's good to see you in chat there, Peachy. This is getting worse and worse and worse. So now all of a sudden it just it just came out. Anyway, yeah, look, I, I tried very hard with this char and he's supposed to look a little bit old. But the thing is, when, when I put the armor on him, it basically covers up all of his youthful looking skin sections. So anyway, there you go. All right. Uh, yeah, where's this Mordrum NPC? Here we got the rock bar. Alright, there you go. That's enough rock for you. That's enough of the devil's music. You guys aren't to listen to that any longer. Um, but yeah, so as far as I remember, that's new. They might have been dancing on the, on the beach before, but that specific flavor of instrument and sound never existed until recently. So they did that. You know, I'll tell you what it reminded me of more than anything. In Am Noon, there's that bar where the NPCs are all playing music instruments and stuff, and it reminded me an awful lot of that. Um... Uh, but yeah. My problem right now is, as always, that I don't know which crystals I've grabbed already and which ones I haven't. It looks like that might be a crystal over there that we didn't get just yet, so let's try and griffin over to it. Uh, yeah, if someone wants to type in chat very expressly where the Mordrum dude is, we will speak to the Mordrum dude here on stream. So you go, here's one. I don't remember. They weren't doing rock music in that place in Amnoon, were they? Or they cycled, didn't they? Wasn't it sometimes rock and sometimes more sort of <laughs> ethnic? Southwest, apparently. All right, it's this way then, I guess. So there, there's a quag and hatchling swimming around. A little pink cutesy one. Uh, I'm going to keep exploring over here because I haven't been here much in the sky, crystal, cr sky crystals for the, climb for the claiming. Why don't I look at a guide? 
because you guys can be my guide. Didn't they have a char on the on the base? There's something about char being on base that just makes so much sense to me. Oh, come on, man. I like how this rock is painted with the, 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 the blue, suggesting that it's the blue jumpy crystal that they want you to use here. Okay, so we get that. Here's another thing that's kind of occurred to me. Now, in the video I made today, I'm being kind of cagey about it because I can't actually remember. All these water areas, I don't remember the map being anywhere near this big. So what is the case? Have they actually expanded the map? Or is it just that they've, they've filtered more content out into these areas now because skimmers are things and because of the new meta and stuff? Which one is it? In the video, I kind of proposed that it's the latter of those two. But, uh, you know, I really don't know. I don't. I did not remember it being this big. I remember that you could explore and go out into the waters, but there was, it was just, I just remember hitting currents and that was kind of it. Um, so, like, the bit with the cow on it, which we can go to soon, was that always there? It's just you couldn't really get up, and now they know they, you, that you can get up, they put a cow on top? Any favourite pieces of new lore or dialogue? Um, I love that Wozmak is here. So, if you guys don't know, when you play a human noble, you have a party where you meet Lord Farron right at the start of the game. At the very beginning of Guild Wars 2 2012 content. And at the party, there's a magician called Wozmak who is doing various tricks. And if you watch him for long enough, eventually he vanishes and he appears again right at the end of the personal story in like the celebration instance. But Wozmak's in this patch again and he's the guy that summons like the effigy. I think that was kind of cool. I liked the. I, I, I don't know whether it's lore necessary, but they've got some dialogue in here where basically some of the Quartarian guys go to the Zephyrites and say, hey, uh, you knew about raptors? And they were like, yeah, they're really popular. What are you talking about? You're like, yeah, you didn't think to tell us about those? And they're like, no, we thought you knew. Oh, you knew about skimmers? Yeah, we thought you knew. You knew about jackals? You knew about griffins? You knew about all of this stuff? And they're like, yeah, why? What's up? And they're like, that would have been handy in the jungle in Heart of Thorns. I love that. That was just such a nice, like, knowing nod to how broken those maps are with, with mounts and... And it, it does a really cool thing as well. It, it, it obviously makes us all directly re understand there's more of that going on right now. There presumably are things the Zephyrites aren't telling us about Cantha, about the Ash Legion Citadel, about the Blood Legion homelands, about coasts we've never been to. There's presumably a ton of that going on now. And so, like, it's just a very, very cool, n nice little line. That I like that. Yeah, and they say, so brave at the end. Uh, that we went to the jungle without the mounts. So brave. It's brilliant. It, it, I, that's not really lore. The one thing I regret, and I might be wrong about it, but they didn't do much for the, the uh, Brotherhood of the Dragon on this release, and they're such an important facet of this whole thing, and I, I was a bit disappointed by that. Look at that. Hmm. Looks so good, moving the fog away. Yeah, uh, so anyway, look, a brown cow. As always, when we stream, Zergs clutter the screen and we can't see what's going on, but there's a, cl there's a cow here that is confused, and slightly behind it, there's a rift. And it's a path of fire-ish looking rift. It's it's almost a little bit like a fractally harbinger looking rift. I don't know. The the mists traveler has appeared selling the rev skins recently. I'm not sure what to say about this. It's a bit like the Chaos Crystal Caverns, Blish breaking through and doing that thing with corner is I, I, what i do think is this is probably a hint at something to do with current events upcoming because it's a lot of the similar workers doing current events as the festivals i think right so i hope that we see more of it but it's just a, a, a hint you think it could be utopia related <laughs> uh it's just a cool little thing obviously it's a thing where it's like okay we know you have the springer now so you can climb up so let's put something there in the past like josh foreman would put like a little gold coin into hidden strange abstract areas of lion's arch just for something for the player base to smile and be happy about uh, when they get to those weird places. But is there more meaning to the cow as well after that? Well, we'll see. All right, well, a race is beginning, and there is actually a race to do for the daily. So let's go do that, shall we? Obviously, it's hinted in the next expansion, cows, cogs of war. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cows of war. <laughs> no, cogs of war, which the initialism is cow. Guild chat, they just said a dev asked Matthew to put... I kind of hate guild chat at the moment. Because every single time I miss it and it's like, oh, I'm out of date. I'm, I'm out of date. I don't have this information anymore. For God's sake. All right. So last night, apparently they revealed a bit more. 
Someone's been watching Legion at Arena Net. All right, okay, so check it out. Uh, this is the Dolliac Circus. This is from... Um, uh, before actually four years ago this existed and it was when guild rushes and stuff were kind of new so the devs were playing with it this feels very guild rush like in a lot of ways this experience is a lot more pure to me than uh than the rest of the experience of the cliffs because you can't mount here you can't be a cute little dolly egg calf on a mount as gorgeous as we look uh you can't do that so we have to rely on the crystals as they were originally designed and i really like that gliding gets disabled as well If you're behind on guild chat, it just means you can spam more news videos at us. Yeah, but people... Are, I had a comment from a guy who was like, I'm getting really angry that the Let's Play isn't coming back. I'm thinking of unsubscribing. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I, I actually responded to them and I said, please unsubscribe. <laughs> because like, what the hell? People are getting really edgy that the LP has been away for about a month now. Because we've been covering all this other news stuff. So I'm sorry that the contemporary content is 100 times easier to make and gets 20 times the viewership. I don't want to be in that position. I'd rather the efforts of the LP get rewarded appropriately, but we don't live in that world. So, sorry, but it's on hold just for a little while. What they actually said is that they weren't so angry that the LP wasn't there. They were angry I apparently haven't talked about it, even though basically every single stream we talk about it. <laughs> but, you know, that's just the kind of view. It's, you get these viewers that they're like, I I only watch YouTube, I only care about YouTube, and I'll be judgmental and annoyed if I'm asked to go beyond it. It happens a lot with, like, story content now. You know, we've talked way more in detail about Palawa Joko and episode, episodes 1, 2, and 3 of this season than I did of, of season 3. But because it's not first on YouTube, because you have to be on Wooden Potatoes 2 to see it eventually, uh, people don't want to hear about it. That doesn't include you guys. You guys are on the stream, so you're obviously going that extra mile. But it's just kind of a thing that happens. I'm not I'm not all cut up or angry about it. It's, it's the way the world works. But uh, yeah, the LP is something I want to get back to. Not just because people are getting edgy about it, but I want to get back to it too. The reason behind that is the VOD don't usually describe the topics while the YouTube video titles do. You think it's a titling issue? You might be right, Rav. Basically, what happens with uh, my Twitch stuff is I'm in a weird place where I don't really care about Twitch that much, to be honest. I'm proud of YouTube videos and I treat them as like a growing archive and like, um, like, like, like it's this thing I build up and care deeply for and like everything. I, it's like a body of work I'm constantly building to. While Twitch, you know, I'll just throw a random stream up and be like, hi guys, I'll put no prep into this. Let's see where it leads, you know? So the titles for Twitch things is usually like, what's, what's the title today? Let's have a look. The title today is, let's see. The Sky Crystal Deadeye. Festival of the Four Winds 2018. That's actually reasonably descriptive. But most of the time, they're not descriptive at all. And now I'm in a weird place where I, I actually kind of do want them to be a body of work, work. So I should work harder on that, probably. But yeah. All right, there you go. That's the Dolly at Grace. We get our daily. I guess we're up at the top now, so we can look for more crystals. So let's look at the memorials. Check it out. The Zephyrite Memorial. Now, Matthew Medina worked on this release, so it wouldn't surprise me if this was actually translatable. It seems like the specific font of New Crichton there is a little bit different, more orderly and text style than what we've seen in the past. It really wouldn't surprise me if, if what this says here is 100% written on that tablet, though. Yeah, playlists on WPT would help, yeah. It's just the way the workflow works at the moment. It's just annoying. Okay, we can't see it because this guy keeps standing in the way. But anyway, look. In the year 1327 AE, the Zephyrites suffered a great and terrible loss when their Zephyr Sanctum was pulled down from the sky. Let this plaque serve as a memorial to all those lost, a memory never to be forgotten. The Master of Peace, the Master of Sun, Aurora, Lover of Lucient, Amenity, Daughter of Squall, Shine, Beloved Mother, the list goes on for a great many names. And then we have a blank page, like when you're doing your GCSEs and the last page is blank and it has to remind you of that. I honestly don't know why they do this. Is this because of my UI scale? I, I don't know what that is, but... Uh, yeah, so all the NPCs that never made it, I, it's nice. The only thing that's a bit weird is the idea of the Zephyrites is that they... 
they don't care about land. So it's weird that they put a memorial at this area of land. Like, they're not tied here in any way. It would have been cooler if the team put it on, like, one of their ships or something. But there really aren't any ships around anymore to do that. There's Ellen Keel's Phoenix down and then these random little rafts around. <clears throat> not title related it's when someone sees a youtube video pop up it's easy to decide whether that video deserves to be on their watch list if they can't watch it right now if a twitch stream goes online and people can't watch it the vods of those streams don't usually end up on the watch list because they are a collection of topics activities and throw in the little bits of law discussion can be annoying and hassle yeah absolutely i mean it in a lot of ways it is lower quality but it is more exhaustive so it's kind of a toss-up right Anyway, there's another one over here. This is the tribute to Aurene. And uh, look, it represents the egg. Some of the other... PG asked earlier some lore that I liked. There's some other lore in here where they talk about, like, handling the egg. And they're just blunt and exp express about it now because it was all secret and hush-hush last time. So this time they're like, yeah, we were looking after the egg. And I think they make some jokes about sitting on it. <laughs> For years, Glint's egg represented our dreams of a better future. We knew that our salvation grew within the scion of Glint, Aurene. Lives were dedicated and lost in the care of this egg. It stands as a reminder of the bond forged between Glint and the races of this world that protected her scion. There are, still men there are many still who dedicate themselves to protecting Aurene as she fulfills her destiny. To them, the Zephyrites pledge their unwavering loyalty and support. Alas, alas, alas. Alas, and so we go. We fly on high into the sky and sing alas alas now i think that the this here might be i suspect it's pulled directly from that old song way back when it's a shame the song itself doesn't get a look in here because that was one of the more thrilling elements of it in the in the years past but uh yeah the sign of the prophet there's all kinds of weird shit about the the zephyrites though that just feels incomplete and as much as i love what the devs did here i i kind of am a little bit disappointed they never fixed some stuff up in terms of like more detail in the brother of the dragon but if you think as you read this does it occur to anyone else that it's really weird the commander and dragon's watch are so tightly all about Aurene now and the zephyrites are just like all right bye when it, for years this was it just feels here's the one big thing i reckon if the devs went through a time machine right back to the start of living world season one and they could take stock of where they actually wanted to go and they had stuff in place i can almost guarantee you i i mean really certainly if i was in a writer's room i'd be pushing for this it's probably better it would have been better if one of the members of dragon's watch was a zephyrite you know like bram or rocks or one of their stories or, or maybe add a whole new character to dragons watch if you want but one of these people we met in season one should have been retooled should have been a zephyrite it would have made so much more sense and worked really well if it was a zephyrite that was in like timey's or kate's role over in taria or whatever it just feels really weird and they can't fix it now and it would be crazy for them to introduce a festival that adds another main character. And they've added so many new main characters recently with Blish and stuff. But I really think that that's like... You can just see these weird incongruences that come from the Zephyrite story. Where they just feel a little bit... It's a bit odd. It's a bit off. And it, it, a lot of it would have been fixed if just one of the main characters was a Zephyrite. Because they'd have that stake in this story, you know. Think about how that would pay off when, in a, when the day that Aurene dies. Or the day that Aurene goes nuts and tries to kill us all and stuff like that. Here. Just think about that. Like we've been standing here for you were just Buster. saying how you love being admired. I wasn't just saying that. <clears throat> Time has passed. I've got a job, you know. Chair DVD <laughs> says the Zephyrites have fulfilled their destiny, Karen of the Egg. Now they have to do more instructions on what to do next. Yeah, that's the way that we've progressed now. But what I'm saying is in the writer's room, it never had to be that way. I think it flows better if they continue to have a vested in interest. Right, so are there Master Sky Crystals up on these? This is what I've been excited to do on the stream, because I've not explored over there, and it looks like you can. And I'm guessing with, like, a griffin, you can maybe do stuff. So I'm pretty pumped by this. Can we actually fly over there? Because I'm actually going to geek the hell out if it's possible. Oh, my God. Wait. Pastors of wooden potatoes is the pinnacle of male voices, and Fornax is the pinnacle of female you cannot go better than them. Excuse me. Uh, I take great insult to that. I think you'll find, and everyone will agree in chat, that my lady voice is 
unrivaled anywhere on the internet. I mean, literally anywhere on the internet. You, you won't find it better. So can we get on that, for example? How could you get that kind of height? I'm simply the pinnacle of human voice. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's try something simple first. Let's try this one over here. Silvari dancing over there. I don't want to gain too much height. Oh, it, it does have collision. This is great. It's a shame there's no reason to come to it, but this is actually really cool. It's weird when you get to come up close and it's like, yeah, people live in that. People are in that. You know, that's their house. <laughs> what a miserable little existence that is. Oh, crap. We're falling. Uh, is there anything lower that maybe we can... Oh, I suppose there's updrafts. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, it's true. I've not touched an updraft here either. Is this... Is it part of the Griffin course? The Griffin courses are pretty fun. Uh, we can take time to do those on this stream if you like. Uh... These updrafts don't seem to quite... Well, hold on. There's a big-ass rock here. Maybe there's a crystal on that. Isn't my lady voice the same as my normal voice? Well, that's the big secret. But shh. Shh. shh, shh. It's okay. I can say that on streams because no one watches the stream. As long as it doesn't get back to nice YouTube. To you. Oh, here's the Silvari. Oh, crap. They're in a really special area. I'm at your service. I wasn't expecting to see anyone else up here come to admire the view it's beautiful but how did you get up here i don't see a mount oh i climbed when i first swam out the here then i climbed a couple of close calls but nothing worth, worth accomplishing is ever easy is it true enough still that was quite the feat why undertake it that they're hinting at new climbing masteries guys mostly to prove that i could i was one of i'm sorry listen to me going on when you came up here to take in the view Oh, I don't mind. Please go on. Well, I was one of those who responded to Mordremoth's call. All these years later and I can still hear its echoes in my head. I've found that by pushing myself, I can quiet them for a time. I'm truly sorry. I hope you find peace someday. I wonder if we'd be saying that if we knew like what damage he did in the name of Mordremoth. That's cool. I didn't realize they were on this giant ass rock out here. I thought you just swam over to them. Yeah, this, this NPC's taken people by storm. Uh, and I just want to, you know, note that if Matthew was working on this patch, he's, the, above all other devs that we've managed to see publicly, he's got a real stake in telling the Silvari story well and paying due diligence to the fallout of HOT and stuff. And I, I think if there was anyone there that seems to have taking it as a matter of professional pride that the Silvari had done right it's him you know and, and wanted more from the Silvari and pushed for that so it's no wonder to me that we get the bizarre of the four uh, f yeah the, the festival of the four winds talking about that stuff right okay so next question can we use the griffin to get over there let's see if you sit, if you are a Silvari and you talk to him, is a different dialogue. It wouldn't surprise me to learn that it is, and it also wouldn't surprise me to learn that it's not. Oh no, this one doesn't have collision. Oh, arena net. Oh wait, it has a bit. Oh, but come on, that's such a cool platforming idea to climb on this one and then get over that and slowly arc our way up. Oh, they should have put like a bench on one of these as well. Can you imagine that? Ah, oh, that's frustrating to me. Honestly, that is frustrating. So, I'm now pretty much convinced there's no reason to go over there. Let's see, though. If there is a Kukachu flyer or something, I'll be astounded. Can you imagine if they've got stuff up there? It looks like it's just about makeable. But from that one, how would we go any further? I don't see any F things. Woodland Cascades with the tree climbing mastery. That would be cool. That's out of bounds, by the way, so we're not going to be able to make it over there. Um, it would also work for the Echo Valley Forest as well, though. Almost no sails have collision. Ah, oh, what a missed opportunity. Oh, and I've just, something's just occurred to me. Couldn't I, in theory... Now, you can't do this with the skimmer. Can't you have the mount, the, the griffin ready, get an air crystal such as this... 
Can't we griffin off of the height of that? We can. So can't I go on top of the airship and then bounce up griffin from the top of that? Oh, somebody's just whispered me saying you can get to the highest one. Oh, we got to try that. There you go. Costage says that apparently one of the people in the bazaar does have different dialogue. I think I've triggered some different di dialogue on a char. Maybe the Omicron speak a bit different. All right. I said this in the video that you guys have yet to see. I'm going to say on stream again. I'm not going to fan fanboy out about everything. One thing that kind of irks me about the patch is how the Omicron were written. They're so lame. I mean, I get that, like, their conversations are in service of something nice. But God, they're lame. They basically come here and are like, Oh, we look different. Oh, I'm really scared that people won't enjoy me. Oh, oh, oh. And it's like, come on, man. You're char. Can't you just, like, be badasses for one patch? I don't like the Omaclan that much. Get me some Flame Legion or Blood Legion in here and rip some stuff up. Like, all of the Oma Clan, all the writing for all the Loma Clan is decidedly lame. And I get that there's, like, nice dialogue, I guess, but can't you have a different race talking about that? Can't you have the Quaggan dealing with those issues? I don't know. Rox was in the Season 1 festival, so she uh, told them about it. Oh, is that the idea? I mean, it's cool that they're in the patch. I do like it. I just want to... I want Char to be badass. Can we get some badass char, please? Not, like, insecure about how they, they look, char. And it's not just the ones at the bottom in the opening conversation. The ones up on this airship at the top as well are pretty lame as well. It's not a big deal. They're just lame. That's it. That's the, that's the only word that I can think of. Right. So, this is quite precise bunny action here. So that guy's got quite a lot of height over on that one. So let's keep moving. There'd best be something up there. I'll be so happy if at the top of all of this, the devs have added something. Okay, get off. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, you. All right. We've got to be really cautious about this. I might be going too far with it. Too, too heavy handed with this. We might not need to be this high is what I'm trying to express. Oh... Okay. Okay. <gasps> what? <sighs> listen, listen, I forgot that he won't turn on a dime, that he has to do this massive, ridiculous run in a circle just to turn around. I forgot that basically the bunny refuses to about face. I just pressed one button there and he went mental. I forgot that it has actual, you know, movement. Yeah, I was facing the wrong way. Yeah, that was a very wide radius. Damn it. We're getting there, though, guys. I'm high as a kite. Oi! That was genius. Genius. You should do open mic nights. All right. Yeah, look, look, look. I bet we can get to the last one. Okay. Right, so stage one is get on this. Stage two is Springer. You know, they did Guildhall decorations, which, again, will be featured in the video. It's a shame that they never, like, allowed us to place some of these for our own things. You know, people love to do Sky Cities and stuff. Spud did that big one. I've seen a few videos with other people doing big ones as well. What? Really? Oh. Um, I would love to have these kinds of assets to put in a Sky City. And we do get the kites. They're just really small, though. Come on. Come on. Come on. No. Get up there. All right. Here we go. Okay. we got to be really precise as we get off of this pole now. Ready? Yes. We made it. All right. Jesus. Look at those up there. You can't get up there. Look how high they are. Oh, I really want to break out of the map and log out and back in under that, though. That's insane. So, I guess this one's the best one for us to aim for. Oh, look, 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 look at these, these squaddies that have come with us. Oh, my God. Guys, how did you do this? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, there it is. <gasps> what? Fuck! Oh, we could do this. Let's... Ah. Hold on. 
Yeah, that's too high as well. Oh my god. Let me... The Griffin's a lot more maneuverable than the Skimmer, so maybe we... The, the Springer, so maybe we can do it this way. Yeah, look at this. Oh, this is so much smarter. I don't even think we need to get off of the Griffin, do we? Let's just go this way. I probably made a mountain out of a molehill on this. Yeah, look at that. Easy. Easy. Oh, 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 oh. Don't you dare. Nothing to interact with. But I'm really, really, really happy they put collision on it. This was our adventure going for sky crystals. I've still got 20 to get and we're all the way out here. Oh. Okay. That should be all right. Because the, the, the bunny always kicks you forward just a tiny bit each time. So I don't see anything to interact with over there, but we will check that a little bit more closely in a second. Okay. Wow, yeah, there's really nothing. There's nothing. I mean, it is beautiful up here. It is cool. Let's just do an overhead over this then. Let's just skim it and, and make sure. See nothing there. Nothing there. Or there. Oh, look at all this screen real estate. All right, well... That unfortunate. I'm going to go down now, and you guys are going to... I'm going to look at chat, and it's going to be, Oh, no, there is something. WP, you're missing it. All right. It's all gravy, baby. It's all gravy. So, do we want to see an adventure, maybe? Or what if you have to use the height from there to go to the other side of the map? Yeah? Oh. Oh, 10 out of 10. Look at this genius. There's hidden stuff over here. Never mind. Probably not. Oh no, WP, there is something. You guys are trolls. You guys are trolls. Temp bands, Rav. Let's do it. Temp bands. Alright, there you go. Sky Crystal, done the totally legit and intended way. So we're at 35, 32 out of 50. Sorry, 35 out of 52. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't you do that. Okay. That was one of the flyers, which I've already got, apparently. But not the crystal that was right next to it. Silly me. Okay. Uh, here's another flyer. So, here, I'll, I'll start grabbing these. Basically, the idea of these is the quagon that was missing all those years ago. Oh. That's kind of funny. Uh, there's now flyers. There's some kind of mystery. This flyer is torn and weathered. And I love the NPC face here. Look, this is art. I was talking about this with the law book UI thing. It would be nice if we had proper art on each one. And they kind of do here, but they don't use the law book UI. It's kind of a strange, like, odd mix. Um, oh, somebody's whispering me saying there is something up there. Really? Uh, anyway, this fly is torn and weathered, featuring a drawing of a quagon, seemingly spewing vitriol to a shocked audience. Below are the words, Kukachu the Invidious. I've never actually heard this word before in my life. Take the fly for your collection. So I've got three of them now. So look, there's the incombustible, the inconsequential that's me, the insecure, that's me, the inaccurate that's me, the infirmed, that's definitely me, the insubstantial, that's me the invalid, that's me the infuriated, not so much I don't really get angry, uh, the indiscreet, the incautious, infernal, invidious inappropriate, incoherent, definitely me, inane inquit, 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 inquit inquitus inexplicable, incongruous Incomprehensible, infallible, indisputable, incontrovertible, inscrutable, indubitable, intemperate, intolerant, insane, incriminated, indicted, and incarcerated. Ugh. Oh. Who knew there were so many words that began with ind? Do you think that they went to an Oxford dictionary? WP is one of those tweets where someone posts an image and just captions it with, This is me. Yeah, I already threw the balloon at uh, Evan, and listen, I really thought that was a dirty joke that they were making there. What's it called again? No one likes a wet char. I, I mean, 
I couldn't believe it at first, but I guess I'm wrong. I guess the, the dirty joke is everyone likes a wet jar. But I, I, that really blew my mind. I was like, what the hell? But uh, uh, I guess it's a fun little little bonus achievement. Is my thief male or female? Uh, male, male. So here's an example of what used to be really interesting little sky crystals, and now they just feel a bit weird to be. You thought it was a nod at cats? Yeah, I think obviously on the surface level that's that's what they're going for. Yeah. <laughs> and let's leave it there, guys. <laughs> you also like the new sea shanty music you get for the loot collection on the cliffs. There's a new sea shanty? I swear, some of the music in this map, it feels so new to me. I, I have no memory of it. It's a real problem, though, because it's such, like, a traditional fantasy thing. It kind of just makes me want to play games like Divinity and other, like, more old-school RPGs and stuff that have, like, that aesthetic. It's really bad, but uh, in the best way possible. So there's a Sky Crystal up there, a Master one, but they've just put an Arp Draft allowing us to instantly get it. What's up with that, Arena Net? I thought these were supposed to be hard. But that's nowhere near, nowhere, anywhere near as complicated as the other things. I guess core accounts still get that experience, right? Then no, we can zip from one to the other. In fact, there's loads of them here. Wow. Quarteria awesome. Vistas are like that too now. The initial intrigue of wondering how to I get there is totally lost. Yeah, you just have to hope that people don't rush the mounts, lol, which they're going to, but yeah. Listen, having good experiences in video games is not what's important. Rushing through them is what's important, okay? I'm on a bit of a roll with the master crystals right now. Most of them are in the same place as they originally were. Kind of feels like you earned it last time, now just have fun. See, but you say that BR spies, right? And I get what you're saying. But we're talking, there's a four year gap. That's a four year gap. There are going to be a lot of people here who never played it four years ago. And even those of us who did. It's not like I have a an express, deliberate, like, immaculate memory of exactly the experience I had collecting all those crystals all those years ago. I'd happily go through the full experience again. Happily. What is this fear in contemporary gaming to redo something? Well, you guys would put Final Fantasy VII in your PlayStation 1 and, and replay it right now in 2018 why what's so bad about replaying something in guild wars but no just because it's an mmo you're not allowed to redo anything it must all be account bound it must all be one time over uh, ever you are not allowed to make someone redo it because of the terrifying g word g-r-i-n-d can't handle that so yeah just reward 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 it's just such a weird like bizarre thing it's really fun getting the crystals and naturally it just becomes now we're just refraining yourself and don't use mounts then. I just, I, 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 uh, I lament the loss of that experience I know many people will never have because people don't have self-restraint, myself included. Now we're all waiting for the FF7 remake. I mean, you may have a point there. To be fair, my rant may be completely in invalid. So that was, was that Kukachu the Infertile? Jesus, they really hate this Kukachu guys. I mean, I get hate mail sometimes, but... This dude's not having an easy one. Oh, it's the idea that he, like, offed himself, and that's why he's in the water. That's not what they're getting at, is it? That's mental, if that's what they're doing. WP, do you like bagels? I actually do, but mostly because I don't really eat anything bready anymore. Uh, and I've never had ba many bagels in my life, ever, really. Um... But yeah, I, I do like bagels, uh, uh, like slightly toasted bagels and different things. I swear, I really do, but they're just like a rare thing that I could probably count the amount of times I've eaten bagels in my life on two hands. Seriously, there's probably not been 10 separate occasions where I've put a bagel in my mouth. Seriously, but I've loved it every time I have. And I know it's just bread in a specific shape, but it's just something about it. I like bagels. WP, do the giant stuff yet? Uh, no, I know there's a giant with a devourer down there, but he doesn't talk. That's all I know. What am I missing there? Potentially a lot? 
Yeah, the challenge was super rewarding the first time at IMO. I wonder if they didn't just want to find so many new locations that they couldn't be reached by aspects only, and they didn't want to let the zone with loads of mount exclusion, so just said screw it to make it easier to recycle the original content. Well, here's look, here, uh, here's something I'm really happy to see on stream because I don't say it in the video, and it's a very important part, aspect of this entire discussion. It's a discussion that you, you can almost guarantee will come up on my streams all the time, you know, the idea of invalidating old content and stuff. So long-term viewers of mine are more than familiar with it. We go over it over and over again. But let me just say one thing at least the way that they've handled this festival with regard to mounts is consistent with the rest of the game vistas are invalidated all the old jp most of the old jps are invalidated by mounts the uh carca collecting in la is invalidated by mounts the big challenging charles revenge la do you remember that awesome video i did with matt do you remember the thrill of doing that an actual challenge in jp that doesn't exist anymore because of mounts it's all invalidated so when it comes to implementing the festival i can a hundred thousand percent understand why the team would just think do you know what Let's not have this be some weird thing where this above all others, we're not going to invalidate, but the others, it's consistent, right? They've just treated it the same as everything else is. So we can lament the design and we can say, oh, this is upsetting as far as Guild Wars 2 is concerned. But I'm not specifically mad at this festival for like this. Why is this here? You might wonder. Why is this here, Wooden Potatoes? It's because this is the route to this thing I just got. You're supposed to platform all around and up there. But I haven't done that because of this, right? But I'm not specifically upset with the festival. It's the it's the the vibe of Guild Wars 2. That's that's the thing. And there is a benefit to it being consistent. And that is that if they ever properly implement systems that allow you to reset your masteries, do account phasing where you can shard your account and have like a new player experience. If they ever do that, if they incentivize it with proper rewards, if PvE League style stuff is ever in Guild Wars 2's future. It will all work beautifully and perfectly, right? By, because everything they kept consistent. So this consistently will now be functioning well under that. So so it is smart in that they've done that with the festival. And I, I do want to be clear. I'm not specifically upset or, you know, it's not even new, really. The whole old oh, mounts just broke everything. It's not new. It's a discussion we've had for a long time. It's a discussion we had when gliding came in. So, you know, like, uh, don't don't think that it's something that weighs super heavily on me. It weighs about the same as everything else for Guild Wars, you know? And naturally, we'll skirt the borders of that conversation whenever an update like this comes in, but I do think they made the right call. Let me put it that way. I'm upset with the general trend of the game, but I think they made the right call. Here, you can see, because I'm not even focusing, really, I'm struggling anyway, even with mounts. <laughs> I mean, you could be devil's advocate right now and be like, look, WP, you're struggling. <laughs> Uh, let's just see if there's another way to go. Uh, what's the UI for Mount Rental? Uh, it's just an NPC who says, hey, and they charge you for Mount Rental as well, by the way. So I wonder how that works. Does that mean that if you hit water, you you have to spend more money because you don't get the mount back? WP, what do you dislike more, springers or spiders? I guess I dislike them for different reasons. I'm scared of spiders. Freak me out. I'm not scared of springers. Uh, or am I? <gasps> Maybe I have a bunny phobia. And I should take to the forums and ask the devs not to add bunnies to their game. Why was I doing this? Oh, the, the, the meta's up. Oh, guys, we got to do the meta. What's going on here? This is Zephyrite. Hello. The sun must set. I admit, I am surprised to see another soul down here. Do you seek this solitude as well? It's quiet here. I can see why you'd like it. Is everything okay? Mm, oh yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just... Ever since our ships fell from the sky, I can't find... I find I can't handle too, too much commotion. I wish to celebrate with my brethren, but it was too overwhelming. Is there anything I can do to help you? I appreciate the concern. I really do, truly. Though I am fine here. You're kind to think of me, but the best thing for me right now is exactly what I'm doing. Please enjoy the festival. Okay, I will. I wish you well. He's cool. Is there any, like, crystals or anything near here? Oh, there is. There's a master one just up there. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, he's from Canther. What? Don't be mean, chat. <laughs> 
He's from he's got he's from Cantha. As far as I remember from the gate guards uh dialogue way back when, that was the accent of a general Canthan NPC. <laughs> I like to imagine WP's hands were pulling his eyes to squint. Christ! No, I was not. No, I was not. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the meta. Guys, this is my favorite thing. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing. I know you might think, oh, it should be the lore. It should be the Mordium or whatever. But let me tell you, the second phase of this meta is awesome. I This is exactly what I want from the Isna Isles. Who's with me that this is the best thing about the meta? Uh, about the, the updates to the map. When when it goes out there and you're like skimmering along the island and you're dipping underwater every now and then and you've got the water splashing on your face and the clear blue skies. Oh, it's amazing. It is such, such, such a powerful, cool experience. I really want the Isna Isles to basically copy what the festival team is. I will be disappointed if the Isna Isles don't get anywhere near this. I'll be disappointed if we never get the Isna Isles, frankly. But this is the kind of the beach, island, tropical paradise experience I want from Guild Wars. And amazingly, we get it here in the shiver peaks of all places. I mean, you could go as far as saying the Steam Spur Mountains, but my god. It's too good. Oh, can't even get on the boat. Yeah, this is seriously a vacation spot. 100%. It's the best thing. Oh, never mind. I'm, I'm ignoring those ones. I'm not talented enough. Yeah, so you want to see the, the uh, mounting uh, rent. Welcome, friend. On behalf of the fine mount traders of Seekers Village, we're proud to offer our services for a small donation of 10 silver. And so we can get on it, and uh, yeah, now we have a rented skimmer, which we can use for the various aspects of that. So the, the meta starts here where you spawn from the boat, basically, at the bottom. And you can climb around and, you know, do your thing. There's stuff on the boat up here. So if I get off now, I basically just spent 10 silver for nothing. Must be really weird, actually, renting in this festival. It's amazing how ingrained renting is as well, when you think about how renting became a thing. It was like an afterthought, wasn't it? It was like people complained that they didn't have mounts in the, the labyrinth, so the devs added it afterwards. It was an afterthought, you know? It was like a, a, a small bit of quality of life, and that small bit of quality of life born out of forum fe feedback has now become a huge element of the um, an upcoming festival. Oh, what's the buff? Oh, rent them out. Get festival goers who rent a mount in the Zephyrites may continue borrowing it until it's favorite. Oh, okay, so I get it for an hour. Oh, that's nice. Okay, well, there you go. Perfect. That was Kukachu that I don't know. Sorry, I should read the text, shouldn't I? I guess it's changing each time. My bad. My bad, my bad, my bad. That's two we basically skipped over now. But that's another Kukachu flyer. Slowly working on them. Uh, so you might think, well, okay, WP, why are you doing the meta if you don't care about pushing the merits up? This is just like at Amnoon. So these bags of loot I'm collecting, they actually are items I can trade. Uh, as you see, as I gather them, you can spend them at this vendor here for booty. And for a thousand of them, you can get the beach Choya, who's up at the top. So yeah, and the kites. And I do want to get that many, so slowly but surely. Just for completionist collectionism. Right, check it out. So phase two. Look at how cool this is. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not tooting its horn for no reason. Because remember, though, and I say this in the video as well. People who haven't played since PRF came out, a recent update it massively increased the skimmer speed. So the skimmer over water just feels really good, and you can feel it really slows down on land here. So then you move out, and look, look how it just gets you interacting with these islands and things. It's just. It's it's great. I love that the quantity of islands, the amount of them that are there, how we like move around with them. And look, you like ramp up. I swear, you guys know I've been playing the Crash Bandicoot remake on my PS4. Um, that's like when I'm, that's me gaming when I'm off the clock, if you will. And uh, and I'm looking forward to the Spyro remake as well. But in Crash 3 Warped, there's these like tropical paradise island stages. Very few of you all know, but you'll be out there. And you, like, ride around on a jet ski while you're playing as Coco, the female. It makes me think of that, you know? And you go over ramps and you dive down underwater to break the c crates every now and then. It's great. Crash was a poorly written game. What, so you don't like it? Yeah, judging those games for the quality of their story is uh, absolutely the right priorities to have. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was a bit buggy there. 
Yeah, they, they, Insomniac and Naughty Dog were geniuses back in the day. I mean, Naughty Dog to an extent still are. We'll see how much they mess up with Last of Us 2, but it's a shame what happened to uh, Insomniac. It really is. I'm I, I, I'm a pretty big Insomniac fanboy. If we re, if we wound the clock back about 15 years anyway. I love the way they did everything. The hidden dev areas. The, uh, it was just great games. Why don't you just put in Wave Racer? So let's climb this as well for a second. Go back to the Springer here. And yeah, like the mayor just works because you want lots of these be always when you're not going to slow down because my motivation isn't really pushing the tier or triggering the bonus event. Now, here, I heard another thing. People have been saying that when we trigger the bonus at the end of the meta, it might actually spawn a... Uh, I, I, well, it will spawn something, but that there might be an infusion. Is that true, guys? Is there an infusion that's hyper rare and tied to a festival? Is that actually a thing? Like a fiery infusion? This is what I've heard. Did I play the new God of War? No, no, no. You guys have got to understand. I really don't play games much when it's not on YouTube or Twitch. Um, I try to make time for it because... I, I do like playing games, and I, I but I often find myself... I mean, that's not really true. I've been playing a lot of Ark lately as well, and I don't know. I'm mostly just a PC gamer, Solaris. Listen, don't get into grand strategy games. If you guys want any, any, any advice, be very careful getting into grand strategy as a genre because you will literally lose all your free time. <laughs> uh, they've got so many cool reveals going on with that with the tile rework at the moment as well. I keep looking at that. Literally, in their community, if you're like a Solaris fan, if I was a Solaris YouTuber, I'd have like a daily news video I could do for you just because they, I could, like literally one of their devs, their game director, throws out a tweet teasing an upcoming thing and it sends everyone into a frenzy and you get enormous amounts of discussion and excitement and fervent, like literally every day. And I'm just like, it would be so easy to be a Solaris YouTuber because you would literally just read a tweet each day and just speculate about it. It's that easy. And people are so pumped and hyped about all the updates they've got. It's, um, it's incredible. Do Solaris do a multiplayer game series? Like, yes, they do. They, they're in season two at the moment. I didn't know that was from EU4 as well. I mean, Paradox are just... It's just something about the, the way that Paradox work. It's just... They're on the ball, man. They, 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 they're cracking the code on developer gamer interactions and, and game development. They really are. Anyway, <clears throat> this phase is about to be over. And like I said, just this, literally what you're watching, this simple little wee, this is my favorite thing about the festival. This is it. This is the number one. This is the, the oh, or maybe Aspect Arena. I don't know. I'm pretty pumped by Aspect Arena as well. Crown Pavilion, I really want to do. Oh, guys, what a festival. All right, there you go. So now the third phase, what we do is it's in the upper areas and it's the climbing. Have I done the thing where you carry the light from the dead Quaggan body in the shipwreck to the Quaggan house? No, I haven't. Is that what that is? I heard that there was a dead Quaggan, but I didn't know anything else. Is there a whole thing there carrying a torch around? That's pretty crazy. Oh, look at Squad Chat. Ooh! Hellfire infusion? Seriously? It just says, well done for its flavor text. What? What does it look like? Do you guys know what this looks like? How rare is this? Is it on the TP? It sounds so cool. No, it's not on the TP. Is it a count bound? It didn't drop yet. It's not dropped yet. Oh, I'm actually going to have a fit. That's so cool. Dude, that is pretty badass. That's the real, that's delicious. Do you think it's bugged or do you think it's deliberately like this? I hope it's deliberately like this. Let me just regale you guys, you Guild Wars 2 fans who never played the majesty that was Guild Wars 1. Let me regale you of, t of tales of the mini polar bear. So basically, in Winter's Day, in Guild Wars 1, there was a dungeon that you could do. It was only available... This version of the dungeon, anyway, was only available 
during Winter's Day. The other versions of it had different rewards and were, were structured differently. And like two, and people would farm this constantly, all festival, hundreds of times. And there was like a 0.00005% chance for a mini to drop, the mini polar bear. Now, as a Guild Wars 2 player, you won't realize the hype of that, okay? Because minis are just, who gives a shit, right? But it was the most exciting thing in the world, farming for that polar bear. People would literally, you know, they, they'd... It would be their holiday season and their mum would call them and they'd pick up their mobile and they'd be like, you're right, mum, how's it going? And they're like, oh, hey, honey, I haven't seen you for like three years. Do you want to come over for Christmas? It would be wonderful. We're having the whole family. And then the nerd would say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm staying in. I'm farming for the mini polar bear bitches. And she'd say, oh, but I really miss you. And you'd say, no, I've got my priorities. The mini polar bear farming is what's more important. And they'd go and they'd do that. They'd give up their social lives, their friends, their families. They'd stay in and they'd farm for that bad boy. And if you got lucky, and in all likelihood, you wouldn't get lucky. But if you got lucky, you were a god among nerds. And that was a greater present than the companionship of your family than any of us could ask for. That was pretty hype. And Guild Wars 2, pandering to those casuals, right guys, has never had an analog for it. Until now, question mark, the Hellfire Infusion. Except intelligently, they've done it in summer where, you know, we're not, we don't get in trouble for ignoring our families. So that's pretty cool. Or is it perhaps, um, oh, is that another crystal up there? I don't have, or is it perhaps just bugged like final rest or something? Look, it's okay if it's sellable on the TP as long as it's ultra rare. If it's so rare that you don't even find it on the TP, it, like it's Chak Egg Sack times 20 sort of thing. In that it's like, um, you know, you have to go outside the TP because it, it costs, you know, five digits. Wait, not five digits. Uh, six digits. It costs like 100k gold plus. That would be so crazy. Shut up, mum. Why are you angry, honey? I didn't get this stupid infusion. You don't get it, mum. I'm supposed to have it. <laughs> you can never have too much I actually trouble. entered into the Guild Wars Christmas card competition. The premise of my thing was don't forget the family members work in this winter's day. Then you opened it up and there was a picture of the player sitting in front of the chest surrounded by puddings, cane and eggnog. Really, Benji? That's awesome, dude. That's kind of hilarious. I mean, Guild Wars lost its way at some point. It decided that asking uh, its users to abandon their social lives and, you know, responsibilities was not the kind of experience they wanted to cater to. I don't, I don't know who made that radical decision, but it was, it was the first, the first in a long list of mistakes that have led to Guild Wars 2's long surrender. Until today. <laughs> The Hellfire Infusion. No, I don't know what is going on here. So there you go. All right, it's done. And look, I'll show you. There's some cool dialogue. This is where Wozmak summons it. I hate getting dressed up. These things shouldn't be so formal. Oh, that, that's their dialogue. Wait, 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 wait. We don't want that. We want to be over here. Here you go. Look, look, look. The fire ring, Wozmak. I'm here to entertain. Uh, it starts in 30 seconds. Oh, so yeah, the Hellfire set's always been achievement related, said Zed Zeller. That's a good point. You have caught a so, maybe it's got nothing to do with the festival. It's just not dropped yet because it's actually going to be an AP reward. I'd be excited for them to do more AP re rewards. I, uh, I'm about to leave, like, what's exciting. There's so much AP here, I've pumped up a little bit here. But this is my last bit of armor, and then I'm, like, done. So what, maybe a 40, 40k reward? 45k? 50k reward so there you go anyway he summons the thing and we get water balloons oh is he bugged what <laughs> he's bugged he's not moving he should be running hello how did we bug it is that because we're streaming and everyone was standing there he has stage fright what's going on here somebody deliberately do oh is that in our hands did we deliberately bug that oh i cast that too many times 
I'm guessing there's water balloons closer to him. But yeah, you throw the balloons. The only thing I don't like about this is you can't see any floaters showing like what damage you do when the balloon lands. Same is happening on your server too. Really weird. How would you feel if, if 100 people water ballooned you every two hours? I reckon that'd be kind of fun. I'd go to a water park for that. Wait, I was doing regular DPS there. What? Hold on, is it that the water balloons make him vulnerable to regular damage? I thought it was just pure water balloon action because they didn't want regular combat being a thing. If that's the case, I'm wrong in my video about that. How did I hit him with regular damage? No, it's not like that. So, so how comes I've done damage? It just bugged. Okay, all right, fair enough. Okay, I'm glad I... Yeah, that went. Okay, uh... So there you go, that's the meta. No hellfire infusion for us. Thanks, ArenaNet. <laughs> God, I'm mad. So we only need one more Master Crystal. Seems the Master Crystals are really piss easy this time. Uh, and then we need a few more of these. So where might they be, I wonder? I have a few laurels. I have... 510 laurels today. Why are we talking about my, nor my laurels? There is dialogue that the Zephyrites knew about the mounts since a long time. Yeah, we talked about that earlier on the stream, Dan. It's very cool, isn't it? It is very cool. Damn it, why didn't this meta drop the Caladbog? Look, you gotta earn Caladbog like the rest of us. I somehow feel like... Oh, look, there's a Sky Crystal. I feel like if I just fly around on the Griffin like this, I'll see all the crystals really easily. Yeah, a few. You know, I know what it's like to have really high currency. Here's a, a, a dirty little tip for you guys. If you want to be a successful pro Guild Wars 2 streamer or a uh, YouTuber, literally just have a lot of a currency. That's all it takes. If you get 10k plus gold and you just never spend it, you can be a terrible player. You can have no valuable insights whatsoever. But if in your videos and streams you have over 10k gold, People will take you really seriously and they'll talk about it constantly. When I was doing Zero, uh, not Zero to Hero, the legendary hunt for our big Path of Fire contest, you won't believe the amount of like, there was just a change in, in the atmosphere of everything just because I had a lot of money on my account. Like just have a high amount of currencies. Do nothing else of any worth, but if you have a high enough, you'll dupe people into believing that you have value. Uh, and you see it all over the place. I'm not trying to criticize individuals or anything but it's it's like the easiest way to for people to believe you know what you're talking about and it happened I, i'm very acutely aware of it as well because as when you use the stage server as a partner to get early access to stuff and make content on those accounts you have like tens of thousands of laurels and there's always all if that ever appears in footage that i have tens of thousands of laurels there's always people like whoa how did you get so many even though it's absurd you know there's not been enough time since the systems existed to have that many people will like it blows people's mind for free it's it's just like such an easy little thing to do yeah just stop being poor is the answer exactly and then it's okay, because once you're famous, you will never be poor again, because people like giving money to rich people. That's that's how the world works. Be rich, and then you get into the movies for free, and you get your meals at restaurants paid to you for free. It's great. I mean, it makes loads of sense. Look at me. I got a whiskey stream funded, despite the fact that I'm a poor bastard. This flyer is torn and weathered. We featuring a drawing of a quaggan speaking to a noticeably confused group of bystanders. Below are the words Kukachu the Inexplicable. Awesome. So that's six of uh, 30. Is that 30? WP talking real shit. Yeah, I'm doing it in a right way, in a stupid way. But I mean, I do believe what I just said. It is true. It is an unfortunate fact of life that people with money... I, and I, I, it's weird, but it's true. It's, it is. It is true. We like to give rich people things for free. I don't know what it is, but you know. Celebrities do eat at restaurants for free. They do get perks and assets that they could pay for themselves. And the people who need that stuff the most never get any. It's it's a very, very, very strange artifice. I don't know if it's just Western culture that's like that, I've, but it is a thing. I mean, you can't deny it, right? I'm not trying to get too weird at the stream here, but. 
Right, let's speak to this giant, because someone mentioned it. <laughs> WP, please stop. I wasn't ready to be woken up like this. <laughs> well, you guys can fix the problem. Just stop subbing to me. Stop giving me donations. You know, give them to totally new people on Twitch. And, uh... Don't don't give celebrity real celebrities free things either. And there you go. The world will be a better place. With celebs, it's because the celeb eating in their restaurant or wearing their brand of clothes is seen as endorsement. That's a good point. You could definitely see that. There is kind of a pragmatic kind of thing there. You can't talk to the giant, but he does plant pumpkins and his pet will eat them. Eat them. Then he yells at it. Really? How long does that take to happen? You know, I have been quite curious about the amount of giant devourers in the game. If you've noticed, all the branded seem to have tons of giant devourers. There were forged versions of devourers with the siege and stuff. For example, if Oprah just mentions it, Oprah mentions something, 60% of the US will buy it. Now, that's some crazy affiliate link power. Yeah, the anti sellout. I know. I'm not, I'm not doing myself any favors. Uh, number one, any plans to do a collab with the Crichton Herald, like an interview or something? Do you think there is any room on YouTube for a Guild Wars 1 Let's Play with 100% quest completion rate? Uh, to the first question, I've been asked a lot to do interviews. I don't believe I have anything worth saying in any interview, and it feels a bit arrogant and weird, so I I'm not going to do any interview. I did one once, and it just felt weird. I... As for Cry and Herald, I don't really know them very well. Uh, so, and I, I don't really often collab much, so it wouldn't be anything specifically against them, but I don't have any plans. And then for the Guild Wars 1 LP thing, it's interesting you say that because my Let's Play is 100% quest completion. Um, so, I mean, these days I think you would really struggle. If you're trying to make it, I think it would struggle. I don't think anyone's clicking on that stuff. As fun as I think it would be, I, think, I don't think you'd get anyone watching. But then the other side of it is, over on the Guild Wars 1 subreddit, someone is talking about setting up a new LP that's like role-playing oriented. Where it's, it, and in terms of role-playing, that doesn't mean they invent their own lore and stuff. They're just playing the game and the campaigns and following the quests. But the point is that they, they, they talk in character. I believe the phrase they used is real world agnostic. So what that means is it's not, Aha! I am Eddius, the Mighty Barbarian, and we are today gonna explore the outside of the Plains of Ashford. Ha 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 ha! No, it's not like that. But it's not, you're right, guys, I'm buying a pizza from Domino's. Just give me a few minutes. And, you know, they don't talk about lagging and stuff like that. They just, it's a group of people playing the game, real world agnostic, just acting like a little bit more like they really are interior kind of thing. Uh, but they're still following the game and doing the quests as it's handed to them. They're not they're creating their own content. They're just diving into it. And it sounds really good. And they're going to do like a Let's Play where they add a new character in each new region and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Boots did do a, uh, uh, an interview with Harold, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, that sounded kind of cool. And you might want to talk to that person if you're interested in Guild Wars 1 series ideas. What was the result for the next project? It's not actually done yet. That's a good point. Here, listen, guys. Uh, this festival's a lot of fun, and this is a pretty chill, relaxed stream. But uh, we're starting a new stream project uh, because we're between them at the moment. So if you want to watch one of these, there's a link in chat. Alt-tab back. I know you're alt-tabbed right now. Come back. Look at chat. I've just posted a message. Click that link to straw poll and just post what you want to see us do. Um... And depending on what either one's winning by the end of this weekend's streams, we'll see how it goes. We're going to do a stream about the guild stuff. Oh, I'll show you the guild stuff now as well, I guess. I'll show you the new decorations. Joke's on you. You can't alt-tab. You're on mobile. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, let's uh, let's come back to the guild hall here. So, yeah, we got back to PvP, Winds of Change and Guild Wars 1, Zero to Hero Fractals version, Mercer's Challenge Runs, The Mirror, stuff like that. Uh, well, I was in the middle of saying something and now I've forgotten it. Uh, you think Siege Devourers is a mount? I think they're too big for mounts, personally. Right. So, th we're going to do a stream, that's what I was going to say, on this weekend where we move halls 
and for Spud 1 for the first time since PRF came out, which is going to be pretty thrilling. I do love this hall, but I guess we've been here for a long time now. So there's two races we'll be touring and we'll be doing various things. But today, at the very least, I just wanted to show you the new Zephyrite uh, stuff. So all these giant devourers, are we going back to the Char homelands to see Molotov Rocktail as a rideable group mount? Oh, group mounts I still like the idea of. I don't know, there's a lot of ideas. I still want the giant Natuka. I still want elephant style stuff. I don't I feel like the African vibes I got from Guild Wars 1 Alona are just not there in Guild Wars 2 Alona. I don't know. Actually, I do know why. I do know why. It's because. Crystal Desert felt really faithful and reminiscent of the Guild Wars 1 region. So, all of this is just like Guild Wars 1 do-overs. This is new, essentially, altogether, because the Riven Ellen wasn't there. Desolation felt like a faithful recreation. Less ancient and old and storied and layered, but it, visually, it was a great recreation. Vabi felt like a good recreation, but Vabi wasn't really the be-all and end-all. And then, Istan didn't feel like Istan at all to me. This area we never came to at all and was mostly, you know, inquest oriented. And then Corner was really light on the ground. So there's a lot of, like, nightfall vibes and theming and stuff that I've just not gotten out of this Living World season. I just did not even slightly. It's really weird. But obvious in hindsight how it's happened. If they get some good Istan stuff going, Isna Isles, the other areas, the Tender Bog, and if they get some good corner stuff going, I hope I'll see it. But I don't know, I'm losing faith we'll get all the areas I want to get. This map, please, at some point, Arena Net, please, pretty please, with a chair on top. Scavenger's Causeway. Anyway, so check it out. Oh, I'm not a scribe, am I? Oh, it, it should still appear. Oh, I'm not a scribe at all. Hold on, let me. We won't be able to craft. I only wanted to show you the recipes anyway. To see you. Teach me to be one. I understand. Make me one. Okay, thank you. So, Zephyr. No, that didn't work. Huh. I guess because I'm too low level. Whatever, never mind. I won't show you the recipes. Sorry. But check it out. So, uh, if I go decorations, open our palette, move this over here. Type ZEP. So there's five. Oh, well, first of all, there's there's five new decorations. Oh. First you got this, which the the guild doesn't have because I forgot to craft it because it didn't appear. Phoenix lantern. It looks a lot like some of the POF ish stuff. So you got that. But then. Oh, did somebody remove the stuff I placed? Oh, they did. Oh, I'm not mad at that. That's just interesting to me that people are doing that. Oh, so they've used them elsewhere. Then where's the bridges and things that I made to demonstrate all the stuff? I guess they've moved them. I don't know where they are now. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, there's a window. There's a sail, which is totally dwarfed in epicness by the POF launch ones, which we did streams on. There's the lanterns, which you build everything out. And then lastly, there's bridges. There's Zephyr bridges, and they're so cool. They look excellent for roller beetle races. And I guess someone's placed one of them somewhere. They're also really good just for, like, scaffolding. They're better than SAB platforms. They're really good with the way that they tessellate and connect to one another. They don't clip into one another a lot, so you get the full, like, real estate. It's brilliant. Uh, it shows a real understanding of the fiddliness of decorating from the devs that they've done those bridges. They're really good. There it is. There's the bridges. Look, look, look. Here we go. And we'll do a full tour, tour of this, maybe on tomorrow's stream or on the Monday stream. It's going to be great. Uh, I don't even know how to get up there, but they're really good. I want to craft a lot more as well, so we'll see how many lanterns the guild builds, and then I'll go crafting like mad on it. I do have lots of linseed from guild applications, so they've just been building up over the past few months. So this is good, and I'll, uh, obviously I've spent a few already, but yeah. Um, what was I in the middle of saying? God, my brain's completely farting and falling apart here. Yeah, sorry, if you want to see the full details, they're in the video that will go up later tonight. What materials are required for the Zephyr decoration so I can spec donate them to Spud 2? So you get the tokens from the festival by doing stuff in the festival. As you can see, I've got several. These. You go to the decoration trader in the guild hall and you spend these tokens on the lanterns. 
And the lanterns are themselves a decoration, but the lanterns are used in the recipes for all the other varieties of decorations from this festival. So it becomes tokens into lanterns, and then lanterns are your main decorating currency. So you can place lanterns, or you can turn lanterns into bridges, or you can turn lanterns into windows, or you can turn them into whatever. Uh, it's mostly like basic kits. It's not very expensive. Just get scribing kits and then like wood and dowels and things. They're not pricey. Do we have a scribe in Spud 2? Well, you've got me, but I, I've never focused on Spud 2 scribing, so I'm not sure after that, actually. I'm really not. Right, I want this last Master Crystal. Let's really keep our eye out. Before this stream ends, I really want this last Master Crystal. And yeah, sorry, I know you guys won't be expecting the stream to end soon, but uh, I started early today so that I can end early because I've got stuff to do this evening where I'm not going to be in the house. There's a regular sky crystal up there. Let's grab that one. Now that Joko's deader, what would our motivation be to go back to Istan? Well, we've talked about this a lot. Just because Joko's gone, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden the people there are fixed, you know? They love Joko. And there are sympathizers everywhere for Joko. And there's a power vacuum there. And there's the matter of what happens to all the other Awakened. Koss himself included. You know, like, there's a lot that they could still do. And here's a very simple reason they could easily do Mandragore, baby. Give me Guild Wars 2 Mandragore. I'm still waiting for them. I want a Latenda Bog filled with Mandragore. Let's do it. Who knows? No in our luck. There won't even be a... Uh... The next patch won't even be in Nightfall. It will be like... Like the Char Homelands or something. Because don't forget, we did see that vague map update there a while ago. By the way, just to show you the adventures, this is the hard one. And it is pretty brutal. It's a really good one. Are you ready? I will try once or twice. But the point is, you come down and it arcs you down. So this is really cool. There's some social elements that I like. Grab this. Grab this. Trying not to lose too much speed. Now you're going to rock it up. Now, what you need to do is go down and through through there. It's it's crazy, guys. You've got to go through like that really tight little room. I have done this already, but I'm not an expert at it by no means. I swear to God, though, this is one of my favorite features of the whole expansion by a long way. It's such a good feature. Okay, we don't have to get... No! Come on! I was trying to... I was a bee's dick away from that. Wow, Yukio Blaster did it easy, humble brag. You're a hero, Yukio Blaster. All right, let's, let's, no, I went too low. Anyway, there you go. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> We're not, we, look, we got plenty of time over these streams to do more of this stuff. So don't, uh, don't you guys worry. We will, we will give it its due time. Another sky crystal here. So we're at 48 out of 52 now. We made loads of progress on this stream. Missing one master one and four regular ones. Just from sort of flapping about. Not even really paying too close attention. There's another one. How might we get that though? Let's try and spring up. You tried a few times but you're too bad at it. Oh, just a bit of practice and you will make it, honestly. It took me maybe a quarter of an hour to do it last night, I think. I have a weird thing with stuff like that, though, where I go too unnecessarily, like, optimized, if you will. When, you know, you got a lot more leeway in the timings than... than but you force yourself into these really ridiculously risky strats. Okay, good. We did land there. Okay. Now, the question with this is going to be... Being able to press F and not get kicked. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, the sun's in my eye. All right, let's just go from above. We're going to go a new tack here. You ready? 
Lol, poor Yukio and your sarcasm going on. Oh, uh, were you do? Were you saying that ironically? <laughs> and I took it seriously. Look, that's the thing. What's that rule of the internet? Sarcasm is impossible to distinguish from sincerity. What is that called? Dismount mount from the bunny as you land. It's okay. We can do it this way. Look, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's 49 out of 52. Well, listen, you guys won't get the catharsis of me completing all of this, I'm afraid. But uh, here, I do want to do one more thing here. And we've got to do this on another stream. Aspect Arena, baby. Welcome to the Labyrinthine Cliffs. This year's Festival of the Four Winds. Would you like to try out the Aspect Arena? Competition can be fierce. Can it? Nobody's going to be in there. Can you tell me how it works? Sure, it's a team competition. 5v5. And the object is to eliminate members of the opposing team. The team with the most points when time is up wins. Interested. So listen, guys. This is an activity that we haven't been able to play for years. It's in a special area of the Labyrinthine Cliffs. You will not be able to explore unless you're here. And it's a totally unique combat environment. There are three distinct classes, if you will. And it's so fun. It's like the beauty of Guild Wars 2's combat. You get new spells to look at, new experiences. But because there's no achievements, and I guess because it's vaguely competitive, nobody plays it. I want to know what this feels like, how balanced it really is. Oh my god, there's people here. What? Three thieves and two of these guys. So it's not full teams. You never see full teams in here. But look how cool this place is. So basically, you pick the three doors. Which class do you want, right? So we'll pick this. And look, we get five skills themed around the three things. So here's our auto. You see, we get 100 health. You get our auto. It does two damage and then three wind slash. So it's like a boomerang. Here, I need to put effects volumes on just so you guys can hear. Let me... There you go. You guys can hear that slightly, right? Ah, uh, it's brilliant. So look, here's the boomerang. This guy will probably kill me, by the way, because I'm just trying to auto. So look at this. Look at, look at the damage. Look at the pace of the combat here. It's totally different. So then you get the skill two. We leap and knock him away. The skill three is an involve, so we wait for an ability of his and we move away. Oh, yeah. Check it out. All right, the skill four. A big orb that we have bouncing around. Does lots of damage. The skill five is the leap. So because we are air attuned, we get that. Boomerang, boomerang, boomerang. Let's use the two. Yeah, we got a kill. That's awesome. Mind you, we had assistance from this guy. So, like, you get different skills. And yeah, because we're this, this spends endurance. You know how in the uh, the race, the Sanctum Sprint, which I remind you was released at the same time, they had skills that were tied to endurance? Well, that happens here as well. And you, you get more endurance in the Sanctum Sprint by collecting crystals. Well, it's the same here, right? So, look, look, look. We can knock that guy away. Keep throwing these. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I really like it. Throw the orb. Let it bounce through a couple of times. Whoppa. Knock him away. So anyway, this is just one class, though. Uh, if we go back... By the way, this is capture the flag uh, as a mechanic. It's like GVG flag running. I'll talk more about that. We're going to talk about this a lot more on a later stream. Then, check it out. You get this crystal, which is a totally different setup. And now our skill five is this, right? Which is the other style. Uh, but the other four skills are different. And look, they've all got unique animations and unique names and unique mechanics and unique skill icons. I mean, what a big, interesting facet of the game on a full cool map. And then you get this one as well. And I just hate that this isn't known or played. And I love that, I, you know, experiencing this. So I definitely want to get a ton of people in here and see what we can do. We're actually filling this up. This is great. Everybody who's here on the stream who's coming in, this is awesome. Um, I'm sure there's like map bugs and breakouts. I, I, I maintain that when a festival is live, when Winter's Day is live, it should be snowball fights. When Halloween is live, it should be that MOBA game, play, game type. When uh, Festival of the Four Winds is live, it should be for this. When festivals are live, it should be play unranked, play compete or play festival and pvpers should be able to pvp queue in solo queue or team queue via the queuing system into these game types trust me they're better balanced than people realize and they should be rewarded for it there should be achievements for doing that they should they should hook it in come on 
Come on, not arena net Ben P. Anyone who is responsible for PvP infrastructure and stuff, do it. It's it's a match made in heaven. You should be able to queue from it from Heart of the Mists and do pre mades and stuff. Yeah, and have a festival MMR. Have a festival MMR. Wow, you can use revive orbs in here. That's kind of hilarious. And the sad thing about this is there's no achievements for this in these new categories they added this year. But also, this isn't available year round and thus does not have a section under competitive. Here, look, Keg Brawl has a section. South Sun Survival has a keg section. Uh, Sanctum Sprint has a section. But there's no section for this. Why? Oh, and Dragon Arena as well, by the way. That should be a, You should be able to I'm festival queue in for that. Give me a good reason why not beyond development costs to, to add it in. Come on, it works perfectly. So many of these fan suggestions and whitelists sound like just normal things you'd expect to be in the game already, but aren't. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like a matter of housekeeping and, and like, unifying various systems that have come over the years. When this was first added, formal queuing wasn't a thing. When formal queuing was added, this wasn't a thing. Now they're both a thing. Let's do it. Same for snowballs and stuff. Let's do it. Ah. Oh. These are the things I dream of. A unified, coherent to Guild Wars 2. With a little magical combat. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll play some of this for realsies on an upcoming stream. We'll do some boss splits with instant golds. So literally, we just all spend tons of money and we go boss splits, gold, boss splits, gold, boss splits. We'll get like five done in a 10 minute period and stuff. Well, not that, in a half hour period, whatever. We'll go really fast with it. It's going to be great, guys. And we'll see some sweet ass high, high DPS. Uh, dead eye gameplay and I'll talk about how, how this build works and why it's so fun and all of that other stuff uh, But yeah, oh there you go that Phoenix. That's the Guildhall decoration just much smaller that up there uh, So yeah, thanks very much for watching guys um, I hope you enjoyed I hope I've expressed how I'm enjoying so much of this festival Keep an eye on YouTube because there will be one final video on it and then we'll be looking at the LP and other fun things That's gonna be the end for today guys. I hope you enjoyed have a great evening And I'll see you next time